Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Weather Center Nazario. Happy Saturday, October 14th, 2023. This video today just might be the fastest that I've ever made on this channel, and the only reason being, if you did not catch my live stream at 12.30 this afternoon earlier today, I highly encourage you check that out. My chat and I stayed a lot longer in the chat than we typically do on a regular basis for our 8 p.m. Tropics talks, and if you have and want additional information on what we're going to discuss in today's video, I could couldn't encourage more that you go and check that video out because there's a lot more of the finite details and a lot of the incidentals that I may skip over in this video for the sake of time and generalizing everything we discussed during that live stream. So if you have the time today, feel free to go check that out. If not, drop a comment below and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. The primary issue at hand is going to be AL94. National Hurricane Center has thankfully expedited the rate at which we could see formation with this system. 70% chance in the next 48 hours, 90% chance in the next seven days. I honestly lean a little bit more towards that 48 hour mark. I do believe we're going to see tropical depression here very soon, if not tropical storm, Tammy, within the next 48 hours, maybe as late as Monday afternoon, early evening time. When you look at the satellite, you'll see exactly why. Sean is not looking to be much of an issue, although I have noticed that some of the high res models want to track it right through some of our Caribbean islands as that next frontal system comes off the United States East Coast. We'll have to take a look at that later down the road because that could be a potential rainmaker for some of our lesser and greater Antilles as we continue to watch what could be Tammy, Hurricane Tammy, on the horizon. So here we are, we are on College of DuPage. Here is the latest infrared satellite image, and you can see that at this point in time, there's really no evidence that we have shear impacting this system. You can see Tropical Storm Sean is looking very distorted off to the left-hand side of the screen, but even with those thunderstorms blowing up near his center of circulation, you don't see a lot of those tops being sheared off like they were previously. The same can definitely be said for 94 Future Tammy. As you can see, the convective activity has really blossomed over the last 24, 36 hours, and I do believe that's why National Hurricane Center is now on the ball with upping those chances of seeing a system develop. We're going to start right away with our 12 Zulu heavy hitters. We have the Euro on the left and the GFS on the right hand side because the GFS is officially on board with developing this storm and going full-fledged hurricane as is the Euro but they have two very distinct tracks about them. As you go through time 12Z Euro on the left, 12Z GFS on the right hand side you can see both of them definitely anticipate this storm is going to make it to category one hurricane strength. However the GFS predicts that it's going to go out to see it a much quicker rate rate, and we're going to talk the steering pattern in this video here momentarily, but for now we're looking at intensity and track on all of our Diddleford model platforms. The Euro on the left hand side, however, it keeps it weaker and it has dropped the intensity ever so slightly, now forecasting a potential Category 2 storm getting very dangerously close to our Leeward Islands. I personally am leaning a little bit more towards Category 2, maybe approaching Category 3 strength as we go 7 to 10 days out with this system. It seems a lot more realistic with the dynamics we have in the environment and the current storm structure that we have in time now, but we'll have to see how this plays out. You can see on the right hand side, our GFS wants to continue to track this far away from any Caribbean landmass. However, on the left hand side, the Euro actually wants to track it dangerously close to our Leeward Islands. So it bears watching just based on these two models, but I have a plethora of others that I want to show you today. All right, I'll tell you right now, this is why I always urge folks who are forecasting the weather, scrutinizing the weather, or simply just having fun looking at the weather for leisure's sake. Don't put all of your eggs in one basket. And when I say that, I mean the European model. It is a reputable model. It has done very well throughout its history. It has a much more proven track record, but the icon has actually done a better job in the depiction of this storm since day one. And I actually went back to about the 10th and the 11th of this month when we first started to see initial development in that models platform. And it has done very well in terms of what the storm structure has looked like run to run up until real time now. So overall verification and initialization of this model has been superb, honestly, in comparison to some of our other ones. The left is the icon, the right is the Korean model. And you can see very good model to model consistency here. Both models now anticipating we're going to quickly see a tropical storm over the next two to three days before finally strengthening down to a category one hurricane. The Korean model looks a little bit more lethal than the icon does. The icon is anticipating for our steering pattern to allow this system to get stronger, albeit track further to the north. So as bizarre as this may sound, we want to root for this system to get strong and get strong quick because this will allow a little bit more breakage in our overall environmental steering flow to allow this to track far enough to the northeast of all of our island nations out there to pose no harm or foul. 
The Korean model on the right-hand side is anticipating that our North Atlantic ridge and surface high pressure is going to remain a little more dominant and tracks a Category 2, maybe borderline Category 3 storm directly through our Leeward Islands, which could be very lethal for those of you watching out there. So it goes without saying, we're still continuing to slowly see a trend to the north and the west. That's good news, but because we still have a consistent spread between models, the Euro going more south, the GFS and the Icon going a little more north, I'm going to show you the Canadian model here as well, which does something totally different still, but regardless, we need to be paying attention to this. As I said, here is the 12Z Canadian model, and you can see that we are still anticipating for a mid-Atlantic ridge to develop as our system begins to undergo cyclogenesis and further intensify in the central and western tropical Atlantic. You can see it approaching the Lesser Antilles as a 990 high-end tropical storm approaching hurricane strength and plowing directly through our island chain as a Category 1 going into Category 2 intensity and then moving just across, across directly our British and U.S. Virgin Islands, scraping the coastline of Puerto Rico and continuing to strengthen as that as it moves out to sea, getting picked up by our massive bonafide nor'easter that we're going to talk about here very soon. And then last but not least, I haven't brought this up because we haven't been able to see far enough out in time, but here's our UK model, which is also showing very good run-to-run -run consistency in terms of intensity and track with our Invest 94. You track this through time and you can see it quickly also becomes a depression out in the MDR, becoming a tropical storm and then eventually a hurricane as it moves through our lesser Antilles pretty much right on track with what the Euro and the KMA model are showing. So guys, it goes without saying, we cannot look at one or two models by themselves. We gotta look at everything because you can see, even though the UK, the Korean and all that are not mentioned in a lot of our videos or in a lot of social media weather traffic, you can see we have a lot of cross model consistency to where all the models are thinking the same general tool. It's just gonna be a matter of what the large scale weather pattern does. And that's what we're gonna talk about here. Now, I'm sure a lot of you watching are wondering why we suddenly left the Atlantic Tropical AOR and we're over in the North Pacific. Yes, this is our goes west North Pacific mid-level water vapor shot. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because I've been hearing a lot of conflicting rumors in terms of what's steering this system. And I want to hopefully clear that up, at least with what synoptic analysis experience I have, to paint a bit of a picture for you guys as to why I always mention in my videos, we want to look big picture before we go all the way down to a singular storm or a singular event at the micro scale level. What we're looking at here are these two significant trough axes out over the Pacific right now. It might be a little difficult to spot, but we have one deepening just on the left periphery of this satellite shot. And then you can obviously this very rigorous trough axis and supported low pressure center getting ready to work its way into British Columbia and the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Here's our Alaskan Peninsula and the Aleutian Island chain within this trough, as well as what you can see is a sharp amplitude and an extremely sharp amplitude at that ridge over Western Conus extending through the Canadian province provinces up towards the northern Canadian territories and even off the satellite shot. Now the reason we're talking large scale features is because with that sharp amplitude ridge in place, we have what's called an omega block pattern. What this does is slow down the upper air pattern of our atmosphere. As you guys have seen in previous segments, the jet stream in particular wants to take the path of least resistance. And in this case, it's running into significant resistance as it tries to maintain that west to east flow across the northern hemisphere. So the two kickers on this map are going to be this Omega Block Ridge analyzed over Western Conus extending into the Canadian territories and our two trough axes that are trying to advect or move off to the east much faster than that ridge is actually allowing to. And if you guys look closely, it looks like this trough is digging down into the eastern portions of the Pacific and trying to cut this low and the mid-levels of the atmosphere off and plunge straight west to east and rejoin what's supporting our low that's currently impacting the mid-Atlantic states. If we can see this amplified ridge cut off and we get what's called a cut off ridge or anti-cyclone over Canada, yes, it will continue to kind of amplify the pattern a bit, but it allow the jet stream to reorient in that zonal fashion and get these troughs moving across the United States, increasing our likelihood of seeing some significant weather as they do so, but it'll also open up a channel in the Atlantic and get Tammy out to sea. Now, I know we haven't returned to the tropics just yet. We're looking at our North American AOI, and this is going to be the control member of our European ensembles for 12Z. I want you to watch the magic unfold. So as you track this through time, you can see our frontal systems and our low pressure areas underneath or south of our Aleutian Island chain of Alaska getting ready to move into the packed Northwest British Columbia area. If you watch closely as we outlined where our jet and our larger scale upper level features are on the water vapor, they follow a similar path moving to the north through British Columbia before coming across the northern Rocky Mountains and troughing back down to the south towards James and Hudson Bay and then 
down towards the Great Lakes. I'll go ahead and draw this out for you because I know it's a lot of different colors. We have our oranges, yellows, and in the greens. Essentially, they want to follow that trough and then ridge to the north, riding the jet flow, and then back down through James Hudson Bay into the Great Lakes before finally forming up along the east coast of the Mid-Atlantic state. And that's when we really see our nor'easter begin to kick off. You can see as we continue through time, we see rapid cyclogenesis or a rapid formation of a Mid-Atlantic Hatteras Low that becomes a true bona fide nor'easter deepening down to almost 975 millibars over the eastern Canadian provinces in the northeastern United States. This is what's going to help to pull not only increase the amplitude of our long wave features or our big weather features in the highest levels of the atmosphere over the North Atlantic, but this is also going to help to create a channel of lower pressure associated with its cold front and high pressure coming off of the country that's going to suck Tammy to the north. If you look out over the Atlantic, you can see that 990 millibar low continuing to deepen and move into the central Atlantic. That is Tammy right there getting pulled out with that strong nor'easter system advecting off to the north-northeast. So a lot of moving pieces here. I wish I could break it down a little bit further. As I mentioned, go check out my live stream earlier because there's a lot of things that are happening in the Pacific right now that we're hoping will make their way across the U.S. and play a role in where Tammy goes because unfortunately if those systems cannot get across the United States in time, then as that zonal flow or that west to east flow of our jet stream takes place, that ridge in the Atlantic that's currently steering her to the west is going to remain very broad, very spread out, very dominant, allowing that system to track west and generally west-northwest along its southern boundary into the Lesser Antilles. So we actually want her to not only further intensify to start that poleward movement to the upper latitudes, but we also want to root for this nor'easter system to make its way underneath that sharp amplitude ridge across the country and then deepen down, unfortunately posing a significant weather event for much of the eastern seaboard of the United States. I'm hoping you're picking up what I'm putting down, very sciencey, very into the weeds with everything that I'm investigating, and you can see that unfortunately it's overall a give and take with Mother Nature. One person may be saved, the other person or the other entity in this fact being the United States with that nor'easter system could also see about a severe weather to include us down here in the southeast as that warm tropical moisture interacts with that cold pocket we discussed in yesterday's video to intensify that low pressure moving up the eastern coastline. Now before we wrap up, this is going to be our 0Z Euro ensembles for upper level vorticity, essentially showing where our non-favorable environment for tropical cyclone development and our favorable environment is. We've seen this before on the channel, and the only reason I bring this up is if you follow me on Instagram, I've been mentioning the movie Independence Day a lot. And there's a reason I'm bringing that up, because I'm noticing something in the phenomena in terms of our ensembles that I just want to briefly touch on. You can see as we go through time, we have that favorable condition or that favorable setup as we go through this week and up to about the 23rd of October across much of the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean, and even the eastern portions of our main development region. Then we get a little bit of a break between the 23rd and the 25th, and then you can see our Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean to its entirety become very ripe for any potential development. Or I should say they get into a bit more of a favorable setup for something to develop. We would still need the energy and that low-level circulation or that wave, if you will, to spark something off. But regardless, it looks like the Euro is predicting our environment could be conducive. The reason I bring this up, these are our Canadian ensembles. And if you go through time, here we go. You can see Tammy moving in towards our Lesser Antilles. This model actually wants to take it to the north of our islands. So we're seeing a positive trend with a few members still taking it through the Leeward Islands as well as the British U.S. Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. But take a look out over the Southern Caribbean. You go through time and take a look at how much ensemble agreement we have for something firing between the 21st and the 23rd of October and then continuing to do so as we go further and closer to Halloween. This is very interesting and you guys can kind of make a case that the Canadian may be out to lunch but then I cross-referenced both the Euro and the 12Z GFS ensembles as a sanity check and you'll be surprised what you see. We have our Euro on the left and our GFS on the right. And I want you to pay close attention to that Southern Caribbean AOR. So as you can see on the right-hand side, there's Tammy. But I want you to look at the Caribbean. Watch closely. There goes the GFS firing some activity, firing some activity. And then the Euro as well, right in the same general area as the Canadian model does, starting at about the 23rd, 24th of October. And then going forward, we continue to see that model consensus that something could come wandering out of there for both the Euro and the GFS alike. 
So we're not going to put a lot of emphasis on that. I'm not raising any concern. Let's not start stressing about something that's even beyond what we're already stressing out about in the Atlantic, guys. Just wanted to keep things on the radar as we continue through the back end of October. Time is flying. It's the 14th. Before we know it, Halloween is going to be knocking on our door. So I just want everyone aware of all the things I'm watching as we go further and further into these Weather Center segments. Thank you all for tuning in today. We're going to wrap up the video now as we speak, guys. I hope you got to see a glimpse of that eclipse today because it was pretty awesome getting to see it wander across the United States, and I caught a pretty cool image on the satellite loop of it kind of transpiring across the Northwest and down into the Southern Caribbean. But regardless, everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful weekend. Please be safe out there. God bless you all, and thank you for tuning in and joining me for this Saturday afternoon. We'll see you again on Monday, more than likely. Sunday will be my Sabbath from the weather community. I will still continue to investigate things out there, but is more than likely going to result in me not putting out a video tomorrow unless I see otherwise. And there's pertinent information I need to communicate to you in which I'll probably break live as opposed to doing a full-fledged video. But again, guys, we'll see you soon, maybe tomorrow, but more than likely Monday evening for our next update and our 8 p.m. Tropics Talk. Until then, guys, we'll talk to you soon. This is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.